Hey everyone, this week we're doing some street photography with the Nikko Z 40mm f2 lens. So for a bit of a change I thought I'd come out and do some street photography and I've come to London today. So it is quite cold but it is going to be dry and fairly clear and bright so I'm hoping for some good shots. I've got with me the 40mm Nikko Z f2 lens. Some people like to use 35mm for street photography, other people like 50mm. This is kind of in between so I want to see how it performs. First port of call is up the walkie talkie building just up there. We're going to the Sky Garden, we'll get some really good views, there might be some people up there and things as well, so we'll see what shots we can get. So this is a very small, light and compact lens. In some ways it fits the Z bodies a lot better. Because the mirrorless bodies are so small and compact themselves, it often feels really unbalanced when you've got the big heavy lenses on the front. But with this, it feels really nice and light, compact, and it balances really well. So it is an all plastic construction. It's even got a plastic lens mount. That doesn't really bother me too much. It still feels really well made. It's not weather sealed, but I would imagine it is splash proof and you're probably going to be able to use it in light rain. And it works really well for street photography because it is so small and light. A, because it's not as much weight to carry around. And B, because you're going to be less, you're not going to stand out as much, you're going to be far more inconspicuous. It's almost like using a compact camera. So this lens has got a maximum aperture of f2 and while yeah that's not 1.8 or 1.4 it's still pretty good for the size of the lens that it is and to be honest with the type of street photography i do i don't tend to use shallow depth of field anyway i'm acting quite quickly and i don't want to miss anything in the background so i tend to use anywhere between f5.6 and f8 anyway but it's good to know that you've got that especially as we're here at the barbican center which is an amazing area with all this brutalist architecture but it can get quite shady under the balconies and things so where it is dark, I am just dropping it down anywhere from 5.6 down to 2.8 just to get a bit more light into the camera so that I don't have to pump my ISO too high.
Okay, so we've come to Camden Town now for a bit of a change. I'm hoping to see some really interesting characters around here, some really colourful clothing and shops and things, so it should be really cool. Just wanted to talk briefly about the autofocus. For a cheap lens, it snaps on really quickly and it's really quiet. And it might be an obvious thing to say, but it's all internal, so you're not going to get any extending of the lens. There are no buttons on the side of the lens, as you would imagine, for quite a cheap lens. So you can't switch it from autofocus to manual. You've got to do that in the menu system. You just have one focusing ring. And with that, you can obviously focus manually, but if you want to change it in the menu system, you can change it to things like aperture or ISO or exposure compensation, things like that. So let's head on and see what we can find. So final location for today, we've come to Covent Garden. It is dark now, so I'm going to open up the aperture to its maximum setting, f2, and hopefully if I crank the ISO, I'll be able to get enough light in to capture some images. It'll also help that I've got in-body stabilisation in the Z7, but remember, the lens itself doesn't have any VR, so if you're on the Z50 or something like that, and you haven't got any in-body stabilisation, you won't get any stabilisation from the lens itself. Okay then, I'm wrapping up the video now. I've got some images I can use. It's absolutely freezing cold, so I'm gonna find somewhere nice and warm, sit down and get some food. And when I get home, we'll have a look at the images and talk about any more features of the lens I haven't covered yet. So I'll see you back there. So that was a really fun day, very cold, but enjoyed having a wander around in London, seeing the sights and capturing that street photography. So let's have a look now at the image quality from the lens. So wide open at F2, this lens does have a little bit of softness in the final image. You can see here, it's a very shallow depth of field, so we have got some areas out of focus. But even the areas that are in focus are just slightly soft. And if you compare that to the F8 version, you see it's much sharper there. So F8 is probably the sweet spot. Anywhere from F5.6 up to about F9, you're going to get very sharp results. After that, you might start to get diffraction, a little bit of softness, up to f16, which is the narrowest aperture that this lens can go to. And it's worth bearing in mind that this is a very, very tight crop. If we see the original image, you see it is quite a tight crop. So we have lost some resolution in the crop. And that has meant that it's a little bit softer than it would be as well. But we can also look at this image here our friend the zombie punk and this was taken at f2.8 so quite wide and that is still very sharp 
So it's not to say you can't get good sharp results at wide apertures, but it, you will get the sharpest results if you stop down a little bit until you get to around about f8. But we also do have some problems with vignettes in wide open. This is a raw image, there's no editing on this at all. This was at Covent Garden, it was a busker, and this guy just wandered in, <laughs> started jerking around, putting the can on his head, and uh, taking the limelight away from the busker, and I don't think he was quite happy with it. But yeah, anyway, there is a little bit of natural vignetting on this, you see it's quite dark around the edges. Not really a problem, we can get rid of that in Lightroom if we want to, but it's worth knowing that it's there when you are wide open. And also wide open, this is f2, we do get some problems with chromatic aberration and fringing. You see we've got these blue halos around the lights. So we can get rid of them again quite easily. In Lightroom, if we come down to the lens correction panel, we can choose the pipette next to defringe. Just click on that blue colour that's causing the problem and that'll quickly get rid of it. And you're not really going to see that from a distance anyway when you've got such a big high resolution image. But do bear that in mind again, that you are going to get some slight issues with fringing sometimes when you're wide open. Flaring, I haven't seen a problem with that. I did shoot into the sun a few times when I was at the Barbican. I know there are fewer special coatings on this lens compared to some of Nikon's other Z lenses. But it is quite a simple construction. I think there's only four elements in there from memory. So that does minimise any flaring anyway and I didn't really see a problem with that. So overall this is a really simple no frills lens but you can get some great results with it. It's really sharp at the right aperture and it's really small and compact. It'd be great for travel. It's a really good focal length particularly for street photography and I'm definitely going to be using it again for that. It's not perfect. It is made of all plastic. It's got plastic lens mount and it doesn't come with a lens hood. I don't think Nikon even make one and I do really like to have a lens hood. Even though there's not much flaring issue with this lens it's just good to have that protection for the front element. Although having said that, the front element is quite recessed, so unless you're really careless, you're probably not gonna scratch that anyway. Perhaps the best thing about this lens is the price. Compared to other Nikon Z lenses, it's an absolute steal. It's around about 250 pounds here in the UK. I've seen it as low as 210. So if it's the right focal length for you, then it's an absolute bargain and I do recommend getting it. So that's about it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Massive thanks for watching as usual. And if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, just click down there on that big red button or on this picture of me and that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. Next week I've got a roundup of all the bloopers and outtakes from throughout the year. I hope it'll be really fun, so I hope you can join me for that one. Until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.